All right, everyone, time for some bread and circuses. The Federation starship USS Enterprise is on routine patrol and finds the wreckage of the SS Beagle. The Beagle was under the command of Captain R.M. Merrick, whom Captain Kirk knew during his Academy days. First Officer Spock traces the path of debris back to a planet in a previously unexplored system. The Enterprise picks up a 20th century style television broadcast with black and white footage of what appears to be a Roman gladiatorial fight in an arena. The barbarian gladiator of the sea killed is named William B. Harrison, identified, identified by ship's records as one of the Beagle's flight crew. Kirk, Spock, and Leonard McCoy beam down to the planet to investigate. They are captured and brought before Septimus, who refers to the planet as Magna Roma, and asks them if they are children of the sun. Technologically, Magna Roma is similar to 20th century Earth, but one where the Roman Empire never fell, and thus came to dominate the planet. Septimus explains, Septimus explains he was a senator until he heard the words of the sun and was made a slave. Although another slave, Flavius, suggests killing the landing party, Septimus decides the landing party poses no threat. Kirk tells the slaves he wants to be Maricus, the first citizen of the Empire, suspecting he is Captain Merrick of the Beagle. Flavius offers to help and leads Kirk to the capital city. The landing team put on slaves' uniforms and tries to sneak into the city. They are captured and placed in the slave pens. After a failed escape attempt, they are brought before Maricus and the proconsul Cladius Marcus, who invites the landing team to sit and talk in private. Maricus acknowledges that he is Captain Merrick. When he beamed down to meet Claudius Marcus, who, de who demanded the planet's culture not be divulged to the Federation for fear of cultural contamination, Merrick decided to stay, putting his crewmen into the gladiatorial pits, where most of them would be killed. Merrick informs that the Enterprise crew must also abandon their ship and integrate into Magna Roma's culture. Um, why? Kirk refuses Merrick's demands and instead tells Chief Engineer Scott that the landing party is in trouble via a code term but that no rescue attempt should be made. Angered, Marcus sends Spock and McCoy into the televised arena. They face off against Flavius and Achilles. Spock quickly overpowers his opponent and, when McCoy is in trouble, Spock uses the Vulcan nerve pinch on his opponent, ending the fight. A hail of boos and hisses from pre from pre recorded crowd greets this turn of events. Spock and McCoy are taken back to the slave pens while Kirk is faced is taken to face a televised execution. Meanwhile, Mr. Scott works on a way to cause a planet-wide power blackout, which allows Kirk to free Spock and McCoy while not while also not violating the prime directive of non interference. However, Kirk and crew are soon captured again. Merrick signals the Enterprise to have Kirk and party beam back to the ship. Before he can complete the message, Marcus fatally stabs Merrick for his treachery. Scott soon uh, Scott understands enough of the message and the landing party dematerializes just as they face a hail of machine gunfire. Back on the ship, Spock again expresses to Kirk and McCoy his failure to comprehend why sun worshipping Romans adhere to a concept of peace. He opines that most sun worship is a primitive religious superstition, with no philosophy of peace left behind it. Lieutenant Hoare has the answer. Based on our ongoing culture analysis, we've got it all wrong. It's not the sun up in the sky, it's the son of God. Dory. Anyway, let's get at the legacy of this episode. The planet 8924 was renamed Magna Roma in the pocketbook's published TNG novel, The Captain's Honor, in late 1989. Hmm, pretty interesting, huh? Well, this episode is actually pretty entertaining, and it, and the look at Roman culture is actually pretty fascinating to me. So, I give Bread and Circuses four warp cores out of five. Well, join me a little bit as we look at the final episode of Season 2, Assignment Earth. So, until then, live long and prosper, everybody.